Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Before the tutorial today, I want to clarify that uh, avoiding intersections is one of the most common question people ask me. However, this is extremely difficult to achieve, not anywhere as simple as people imagine. The short answer to avoid the intersections is to use a simulation. Whether it's a rigid body, soft body, closed simulation, or other simulation which allows collision. By saying that, you should know it's never an easy task and it often takes a lot of computer power to do. Of course, there are some unique algorithm that you can avoid intersection without an actual simulation event. These algorithms haven't been implemented in geometry nodes regardless. So there is basically no way for us to do so. Today, it seems we are going to talk about the spheres avoiding intersections by deformation, but this method has many limitations and is of less practical usage in my honest opinion. So I have to be clear here, if you are really looking for a method to avoid intersections, then my answer is no, and it's impossible as far as I know in geometry nodes. Today, I more aim to take this opportunity to teach some vector math. So let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to Noting, create an object and a geometry node tree. By the way, this entire method is inspired by a Blender tutorial from Bilibili. If you're interested in and you can tolerate Chinese, you can take a look with the original one. Here, I'm going to change some method for simplicity and many other reasons. Okay. So let's start with a kind of grid and we can look at the wireframe. By changing the vertices, it seems like the lowest number we can go is 2, 2. But you can manually type in 1 so that we end up with a single edge. So we no longer have an actual grid. But this is what I need for the moment so that we can point the instance with just the two spheres. And we can see there is an intersection in between. As human being, just by looking at that, we can easily tell these two areas are intersecting to each other. But uh, our computer must not really understand this concept. So the first thing we need to do is to actually teach computers why these two parts are so bad so that we have to change that. In order to change that, we need to take a set of position and uh, we need to access all these our points by realizing that so that these are no longer instances for us to change the position. Okay. And then talking about the detections, we're going to use a very interesting method, which is instance two points. Okay. Uh, so that we only have the origin of these two sphere. Okay. And uh, here, let's take a geometry proximity. And since we're going to evaluate the points, so let's change the type into points. So right now, it may not be very obvious what this geometry proximity is doing. I've explained in other tutorials, what it does is basically to wrap all this kind of position to the closest point it evaluates. In this case, it either evaluates to this point or that point because we only have these two points left. Okay. And here is the interesting thing that will, that will occur. So if we take a mix RGB, so we take the original position and mix that with the geometry proximity result and take that to the position. You can see there is an interesting transition which is going on. Okay. So if we stop that in the middle, then you realize most of the time these spheres will go to their own origin because it's the closest. But for this kind of intersection part, they will go to the origin of another sphere because of the intersection. So here we can take this difference as a way to teach computer about the intersections. So we firstly need to get the origin of its original sphere. So we basically capture attributes in the instance domain and the position is a vector. So we just plug the position into the value. So we get its original in origin location. Here I want to remind you, as I have explained in many other tutorials, all these kind of attribute nodes do not carry data by themselves. Their data 
are actually retrieved from all this kind of geometry data block. And here we have this kind of realized instance in the middle, which means these two geometry data blocks are not the same. Okay, so their values are not the same, even if they come from the same node. So these two linkage carry two completely different set of data. Okay, so this is very important. And here we can actually compare these two vectors. So let's just take an equal with this kind of wrapped position. And we can plug this Boolean result into the selection. Then you can realize only this kind of non intersecting point are being affected. Okay. So here you may think let's change the type to not equal so that we can affect all these kind of intersecting points. However, it does not really work. I do not really understand why. This is more sounds to be a kind of bug. But to resolve that, we can do a Boolean math. And let's set the type into not so that we are only affecting all these kind of intersecting part. Okay. After talking about all these kind of intersection detection, next we're really going to deal with all these kind of intersection. So let's go to the top view, and this is what we're having right now. And basically, my idea is to pull all these kind of intersection points to where they start to intersect. Okay. And uh, then we encounter two kinds of problem. One is the direction of pulling. Two is the magnitude of pulling, aka the distance for them to be pulled. Okay. The first question about direction is very easy because you always pull in the direction where these two origins are facing to each other. So we are dealing with a vector mass of subtraction. So we basically subtract these kind of two points. And once we plug that into the offset, then immediately you can see this effect of this kind of two intersecting area just being pulled very much. But uh, this is too much. So we are going to take another vector mass and to scale that. And this is the part in which we can control the scale of this kind of pooling event. Okay, so how do we actually know the magnitude? And this comes to be a very important mathematical function that we need to know, which is actually the dot product. So let's take the dot product. So what's actually the dot product? Dot product is a pretty unique function in which you input vector A and vector B and you output a single float based on a very specific formula and the formula is length A times length B times cosine theta. Okay, so the graph representation is basically we have a vector A and we have a vector B and uh, the angle in between is theta. Okay. At our first instinct that this formula probably doesn't mean anything specific. Uh, it's kind of chaos because um, there are many different parameters and they aren't relevant to each other. However, if we try to normalize this vector using a normalize, which means we're putting all this kind of vector into the length of one and one, then we only have cosine theta left within the formula and when theta equals to zero then the cosine equals to one and when theta equals to zero which means that these two vectors are basically facing the same direction like this in such kind of case this dot part will output one because cosine theta equals to one this means that uh, when the dot product equals to one, then these two vectors are facing the same direction. Okay. So this is a common way for people to use dot product to actually evaluate how similar these two vector directions are. Of course, there's uh, another mathematical function that you can use the arc cosine 
to actually get a degree or radiance angle or the value of theta. But that's another story. It, seem, it seems to be unnecessary, but uh, it's up to you. Okay. Today, however, we're going to use that a little bit differently, in which we're not going to deal with this cosine or theta. We're only to normalize one vector itself too. So if I only normalize LB, then our dot product equals to LA times cosine theta. And by looking at this triangle, you can actually see the relationship that uh, these edges times cosine theta actually equals to these edges. So let's call that uh, X. Okay. So basically from here to the origin. So basically this is the idea. And this can help us to actually get this straight line or the straight distance that we need to work with. So here I'm going to do a simple setup to make a quick result and we are going to fix some issues later. So the first thing I'm going to do is to delete this mix RGB because we no longer need to visualize these kind of points. But I want you to understand that uh, these two vector or the, their origin may have a different distance according to your setup and uh, its subtraction can definitely affect our mathematical function. So I'm going to take a normalize so that no matter how far or how close these two points are, their output from this subtraction always will be one. So that our scale is poorly affected by our dot product function. As previously mentioned, uh, our dot product requires two vectors, vector A and vector B. So one of the vector will be their position, and the second vector looks like it will be the opposite origin. So we basically plot the position into the vector and uh, another position from the geometry proximity. And you can see there is a kind of retraction to avoid the intersection, but the magnitude is wrong. Okay. The reason, as I mentioned previously, we need to normalize one of them, uh, especially for this vector B. So once we normalize that, they successfully avoid their intersection. You can test it by manipulating this radius. And you can see, no matter how you increase the radius, they never intersect due to our mathematical function. Okay. And you can also take a transform to rotate it. And rotate on the axis, you can see we still have no issue. But uh, the issue will come once we try to manipulate this translation away from the origin. And you can see our mathematical function contains error. The reason is that uh, if you look at this dot product, then you realize that we are dealing with this uh, position and its origin, which is actually relative to the the word origin. So the vector originally it looks like this correct triangle, but now it looks like uh, this way. So the translation or the result of this dot product will never be correct. Okay. So we're going to do some several changes to remove this issue. It's very easy to do, which is to draw a new triangle based on its origin. So our vector A will be the position subtracting its origin. So we just duplicate a vector subtracts and we have this origin and we have the position. You replace that into the dot product and the second vector B will be the vector between these two origin. So we use this normalize up from the subtraction to replace its opposite origin. Okay, so now we actually get uh, an X of here, but it's not the translation we're looking for because we need to divide, uh, we need to subtract half of the distance between these two origin. Okay, so half of the distance is basically the length of this subtraction, and we take a divide, divided by two, and we take a mass node to subtract this half distance 
So now if we revive the linkage, everything is being fixed. And uh, even if with the translation, uh, it's still correct. You can rotate that, you can translate that however you want. Okay, so we finished the basic setup. Uh, you can change this setup, of course, by increasing the count of this grid. And you can see everything is still working as expected. You can make it uh, more good looking by set shade smooth. You can also add a more subdivision. So it looks like a kind of a cell dividing themselves. And if they do not intersect, they have no effect. But if they intersect, they will try to avoid that with our mathematical function. The rest is just to change the setup. If you want to replicate the, the cover page, then you can take a random transform node. This is a preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. And uh, you can get a very quick result just to instance everything on 3D space and definitely our method works in 3D space as well. And then you just evolute that in the location. Then it works. Okay. Uh, finally, talking about the limitation of this method. This method can only work with the sphere. Uh, secondly, this method must work with sphere with similar sides. Actually, this preferably the same size. Because we are using this proximity as a way to detect intersection. If I have a small sphere and a big sphere, then definitely all these kind of points will go to the other origin, even if they are not intersecting. So there will be a lot of problem. And this method by itself contains a lot of limitation. It's basically just kind of a cheating method, but there is no real usage in my opinion. That's why I'm not going to make this entire setup into a preset. Uh, if you want to use that every time you have to build your own. But either way, I don't think there is a chance we're really going to use that, especially given the current ability of geometry nodes in which we're not having ability of simulation. So today, this is more like a kind of a study of this dot product because I think this is a very interesting usage of dot product in these particular circumstances. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.